Hey, it's Hubbard. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Well, welcome to the Comedy Store, uh, to the fans out on the patio. Good to see you. Enjoy your drink selections. Enjoy your your ambiance because uh, this is a um, a special time where uh, I think. Look, did we ever think there was going to be a giant digital uh, housing development across the street from the store? Yes. Yes, obviously. Did we think it would be promoting you know places like uh, IHOP? And uh, Quiznos, probably. Probably. Um, But now it just looks like, I got to be honest, uh, lots of, it's like, have you been to the red light district in Amsterdam? I have. Okay. I said that too quickly. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. You were like, invested? (laughs) The what light? What's the (laughs) color of the light? district? Why? Are there people that dance in the windows for... uh, for cash, or if you're me, stoned bites of a McFlurry that I was taunting in front of them. Oof, yummy. So the the first time I went to Amsterdam, real quick, uh, and that's what this giant, if you can't see it yet, if you haven't been to uh, the Sunset Boulevard recently, there's now a huge housing development that has taken over where the House of Blues was, where I saw Hootie and the Blowfish, the Wallflowers, fucking uh, G-Love and Special Sauce, um, you know. Name some other groups that have performed there. Uh, Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, people forget that that venue, probably because of its location, and you can see a little a little chunk of the view behind uh, this giant fucking marquee now, but it again, it looks like you're just looking into rooms that I've seen on Casting Couch Pornhub videos. You know what? I, I, I'm going to say yes, and <laughs> it looks like a video game. Uh, like in Mortal Kombat, yeah. where someone's going to meet their death. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it's sort of nondescript, and it defi- It also looks like um, someone was playing a simulation game like The Sims or Minecraft, For and then sure. like, what else is on? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Like, in the middle of it. Like, what an odd play. Listen, someone's like, let's get this building up so we can get these, these vague TVs on. They're like, Do you want to finish the job? Man, no, it's, not really. It, it is. Have you heard of the Pendry before? And I guess we're going to give them shout outs because they'll probably end up sponsoring something on this street at some point. Or one of us. Yeah. Guys, we heard you advertising on the uh, the pod. Now, I, the, the way that like Paris Hilton is an heir to the Hilton Hotels, who's, is there like a David Pendry or like a Mark Pendry? Donald Pendry. <laughs> I got to assume the kids of the Pendry fortune are big pieces of shit. That they're doing well, but not well enough to finish a building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they're definitely getting their school paid for Lori Loughlin style. Now, oh, do you yeah. say Loughlin like I did, like a Jew? Or do you Loughlin, say, Lof- or do you I, say Loughlin? I do on Passover. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like, do you and, say and, I'm and going oh, to... Purim, sure. Do you say Loughlin, Nevada, or Loughlin... Loughlin? I say Loughlin, Israel. <laughs> Loughlin, Nevada. Do you say Loughlin, Patterson, or oh. Loughlin, Patterson? I say Loughlin, Patterson. Great. Yeah, but I do. I say Lori Lachlan. Do you really? No. <laughs> uh, uh, only in the high holidays. By, um, by I'm going to repeat that in case someone just got here. <laughs> um, a lot of repeat bits tonight, just in case more people uh, stroll up. We got well, two fellows that look the same walking by. What up, dudes? What up, guys? Good feel to see to, you. Feel free to bring those similar faces into the patio area. Guys, they're going to a casting for nondescript video game extras. <laughs> you guys look like the guys I bought cigarettes from in Grand Theft Auto. Oh, they're gone. They're gone? So uh, they can't hear us? They can't hear that? Uh, John, uh, this pandemic has been, and I think it's safe to say, up and down. Profitable. Good. Profitable. I think so. No, you, write, you, uh, you, you, uh, you raise a good question because I feel like everyone at this point has been trying to find uh, alternate ways to make cash, right? Whether it's like joking, selling your body in a window uh, at the Pendry Hotel 
or uh, OnlyFans. Or, oh yeah, dude, I'm sure the OnlyFans stock has gone up tenfold, brother. Do you know anyone? And you don't have to say their name, but if you will, that'd be awesome. That has signed up or is looking to sign up. No, and I, my friends and I joke all the time about yes. what we would have to offer. Yes, what, like because it's basically, I mean, it's a Patreon for for explicit content. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I know some people post pictures of their feet on there, which I don't know how many people on the patio tonight are even into feet pictures or would sell if there was an it. Okay, I love how somebody just gal. outed her Some, friend. <laughs> yeah, that she was finger like, could wow. not have been pointed quicker at someone you're two inches away from. Uh, wow. Look, I'm not knocking the selling feet for cash business model. That was my maybe I'm just uh, feet for cash. Feet for cash <laughs> was a was a huge yeah uh, in the 90s. Yeah, that oh my was, god, uh, a daytime. The same, to, the the same guys that came up with surge. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> cash for gold. <laughs> Yeah. But feet for cash was the original. People don't realize that. What type of feet? Feet is you... only in America. It's mostly meters if you go to Canada. Right. If you what what constitutes a good like do you mind giving us a, a like how much do your feet go for? You and guys was, that are walking up came in at the right time. Trust look, me. Look, no, you could have also not responded when I said <laughs> when I inquired. I think you just did eleven hundred dollars. Oh, $1? sign language. One dollar prices right style. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. A hundred dollars. Good for you. Sold. Oh, <laughs> that's unbelievable. One dollar. Oh, your friend. Wow. Yep. Look, she's shaking her toes through the comedy store. That uh, is an store. OnlyFans uh, foot, if I've ever seen one. Fantastic. So I'm I'm envious of the people that can sell uh, pictures of their feet. I'm curious. I don't know if there's extra. Uh, Dare I say they're standing on a gold mine? <laughs> yeah. Do you have? Is there extra prep that goes into prepping your foot for the photo? It's like if you're taking uh, a headshot uh, at the mall, you need to go above and beyond, look your best. Yeah. yeah. Scrub. Get scrub. A, get a petty. I feel like we're on a game show and we can't tell if we're losing. Guess that toe. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> or it's yeah. like, guys, here's what happened. You guys are going to be separated between bank glass. <laughs> We're going to bring up a weird subject, and you got to get her to go through a foot regimen, but you have to read her lips at the same time while the lighting is crap. Hosted by Mario Lopez. This Friday, it's Whose Foot Is That? And co-hosted by His Dimples. <laughs> yeah, finally. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I'll get to the point to where I'm uh, confident enough in my feet to post pictures, but I also know that there's other things people are posting on OnlyFans. I would like to see someone make cash from OnlyFans from something like like you know you know calligraphy like something that you wouldn't expect you know like yeah but you get that on Instagram there are definitely calligraphy accounts okay and I don't know what I clicked on before that it shows me that <laughs> yeah, yeah. in my discovery page it was like amazing Blake Griffin dunks and it was like do you mean calligraphy I'm like guys? I did <laughs> I look up Caligula What's the Roman the- <laughs> Emperor they're like did you mean calligraphy and I go I know the government's watching, so I'm like, yes, yes, I did. What's the? Do you ever get scared when you type in something to Google and it does do the like? Did you mean this? And then you're like, oh man, not only did I not mean that, but I'm gonna click but on. But now it. I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't even think of it. So you know what that's looking- called? Google entrapment. <laughs> I did not think of that, and now it's the, I can't not think about it. By the way, why has there not been a Harrison Ford movie called Entrapment about... A guy who Googles. A guy who... <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't mean to do that <laughs> this summer. Uh, it's great to have an audience, but for us to be their background music. You know what this we'll is? we'll do a bit. We'll stay in the pocket. Welcome I'll back. I'll be locked in with you, and then I'll look outside <laughs> and see no and go, huh, for that connection, and it just ain't reciprocated. I'm going to say I'm really happy, and we got to talk about our sponsor, being outside of the airport lounge 14 outside of Quiznos. <laughs> yeah. Boy, the last time I got a Quiznos at an, air- at an airport was, and I remember because it was the last uh, time I went to that airport, the Denver airport. Shout out to the Quiznos at the Denver airport. I think Quiznos is out of business. The fuck did you just say? I think Quiznos is out of business. No way. There, look, there's things that I'm willing to sacrifice during this pandemic, and that is not one of them. Quiz, look, they delivery. Um, I just think that people they realize just of, that it was that it was like the saltiest, sweatiest meats. But also, nobody was. It has an OnlyFans now. I think it's good. <laughs> the sweaty meats of Quiznos. From <laughs> they are like sweaty meats and sweaty feet. Whoa. Nobody was. Yeah, it's a foot long. No <laughs> booty. Nobody was going into Quiznos for the ambiance. Nobody was like, <laughs> I can't get my food. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, now they're definitely not no, sponsoring. No, no. Is that all you guys have is food? <laughs> all right. I guess I'll get a... Uh, <clears throat> yeah. the, 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 the sandwiches always look like something from a cartoon. They do. Yeah, I know. That's not good. Like, the food looks like it's like that processed... Um, well, all food, it's all processed, but the... Uh, I know what you mean, though. But some, like but fisher some, price toy food. Exactly. Some stuff is plastic and other yeah. stuff... Like Subway, they said the buns... Oh, that just came out. We're, we're, we're like... Yoga mats. Like yeah, rubber. they were. They were like a foam. That's crazy. It, because they, they had that, um, that sort of memory foam. Literally, the, like the resilience of them, they, where they were never flat. Somewhere Jared from Subway is just like, ha-ha. I'll tell you, somewhere. What do you mean, prison? The, the attention's off me. It's like, dude. Nah, it's not. No, it don't. <laughs> when people think Jared's Subway, telling everybody that. Did you hear they use uh, 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 foam in there? Like, hey. <laughs> You're out of order, sir. <laughs> You're still in court and going to prison for being a pedophile. When I think of Subway, is it sad that I immediately think of Jared? No, it, because I not think the, the exact thing. Yeah. Jared. It's like, oh, when they find out about the uh, the pedophile suit, I got it at Jared's. <laughs> So, by the way, this hand sanitizer looks like if I'm out of tequila, I'm just like. Yeah. yeah what there. brand is it, by the way? Uh, this is Patron hand sanitizer. Well, I, say, I say that because they're, you know, once the sanitizer became a hot commodity, I mean, I've seen so many different types of brands pop up that I'm like, I, you know, I got to know like Purell. Right, and then I think there's maybe one other brand like the Cadillac. Yes, like the Nike and Reebok or Adidas of sanitizer. But then there was one that was like squishy stuff. It was like the dollar store knockoff, and you're like, I can't trust that. You're you like, wait, but does Jordash do hand sanitizer? <laughs> George Foreman had one, I think. It's also a grill. <laughs> we just heat your hands up. <laughs> we heat COVID right off. <laughs> yes, I do a George Foreman audience. Is there a, an impression you've been working on during the uh, quarantine that because uh, you know? You're uh, you're you're one of the greatest to uh, to ever live to ever do them. I love you. Um, Who's someone that you've been seeing uh, out there that maybe you're like, oh, this would be a fun one to start. I um I was trying to work on a Jeff Goldblum for a minute. Nice. And uh, but I really tried to hone my Adam Driver. Oh yeah, yeah, because he got oh, yeah. Your voice is definitely in his in that um, register. Adam Driver is always sort of um like waiting at the DMV. <laughs> Guys, am I in the right line here? Am I in the right line? I've been here since 2 a.m. Okay, let me play a scene. Here's Adam Driver waiting to get a room at the Pendry Hotel. And uh, and I'll tell him that the, we're all full. Oh, we're not taking reservations yet. Here we go. Um, Hi. Hi, sir. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Pendry Hotel. Right now, I just was um wondering, sure. even though this entire building is I, clearly not finished, I would like a room. Are you Okay. Um, I'm very cold, and at the same time, I'm very hot. Yeah, you're, you're sweating a lot. I am sweating a lot. Uh, well, we don't have uh, rooms constructed yet. It's actually still a work in progress, but you can sleep in our lobby if you'd like. Wait, wait, listen. So you, you're just at the front desk telling people this? You, 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 there's no room service yeah. or, or nothing? Somebody just took my bags. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you Adam Driver? Um. I'm I'm his I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm the uh, uh, the drag queen madam driver because <laughs> you're checked in under an alias. I am Kylo yeah. Ren. Who Kylo Ren <laughs> from the Star Wars movies? Oh, I have not seen those. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Wait, I got him in the car. <laughs> There's a ballet. Took my car. <laughs> That's so good, dude. Thanks, man. That's so good. Well, you got to do. Your... You need to make one and, and post. Like we live in the day and age where you can, uh, you know, tag him and, and maybe he'll see it. People will. I love him. I'm such a fan of that guy. He's great. I haven't seen the uh, what is it, the marriage story? Marriage story, yeah. Because it just looked. Look, I'm a kid of divorce. Depressing. Thanks for bringing it up. And so it looks. You're a kid of divorce, right? <laughs> yeah. Byron Allen. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> hey, Adam. So your parents. Split I up love that we nine, both right? know what's happening right now with Di Byron Allen. Uh, so uh, you eat Quiznos, right? <laughs> As you're eating one. So you've been at the Pendry, right? <laughs> yes, Byron. Uh, I. Uh, by the way, a trillionaire. Trillionaire. He was great in the Comedy Store doc, by the way, which did you watch the first episode? No, I didn't. Is it on Showtime? Yeah. If you uh, don't blink, you can see uh, uh, Adam Ray sitting in the back all, all blurry. You, and I remember, too, I remember Mike Binder walks in with the camera crew and Andy Letterman was on stage and they walked through. And uh, I just gotten off or was about to go on and they walked through and I just very blatantly, obviously wide eyed as if I just moved to Hollywood. Look up at Mike, the cameras, just like and, and I <laughs> it went by and I somehow remembered it triggered the moment when I just saw that shot. 
and then I just immediately saw, I was like, my fucking goofy Jufro and my puffy Gap vest, and I was like, but it was like so blurred. Did that guy just mouth the <laughs> word camera? <laughs> I was like, I should have stood up, beelined it to Mike, intercepted him, and then like grabbed the camera and been like, what up, MTV? Yo, welcome to Spring Break. You have to use this now. But I'll tell you what I did. Um, I was in Pirates of the Caribbean Part 2. And, um, as what? As uh, one of the pirates. Oh, my and God. It was, and I actually had Are this you credited? thing where- um, Does anyone remember Jonathan Kite in Pirates of the Caribbean 2? Anyone? Have you guys seen Pirates of the Caribbean 2? Yeah. Do you remember Jonathan? Good to see you again. <laughs> Um, Wait, what so, were your lines? So they did you um, have any lines? So I, they set up this long ass shot, right? And it was forty things needed to happen. I swear, it was like one of the first big things I ever did. And um, and then the camera gets to me, like you're the camera, right? So you're panning. The camera, we're supposed to be like looking like we're going to get ready for battle. And then the camera like literally gets to me and at the end of like this huge setup and I'm just like this. <laughs> And then, and then the and then the Gore, uh, Verbinski was like cut, and I go yeah. <laughs> and I looked at, I was like, "Fuck!" Did yeah. they let you ad lib any pirate noises or? Uh, I don't remember. We talked a little bit, but like, I mean, this was so long ago. Just pirate murmur. It was awesome. I was on the yeah. It was great. It was filmed on an island, right? It was filmed. My portion at was islands filmed, the restaurant. It, the, I was going to say at islands the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I was. It was uh, on my break. <laughs> So I was there for about 15 minute shifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing the lingo. Um, but marriage story. Depressing. Yeah. I don't want to. Life is already so, uh, I don't know, not uh, super, uh, you know, bright and peppy. So anyone that's pitching me like, dude, you got to watch this movie. No. It's about this guy that gets fucking murdered in his car. And then his wife leaves him. He's the best guy that ever lived. And yeah. then somehow he gets super AIDS Dude, I for wa- no reason. <laughs> yeah. And then the he, movie's over. I watched that uh, the uh, murder documentary on Netflix about the uh, family, um, the guy who uh, killed his uh, wife and two kids right before I went to bed. So you're saying I should watch? Is this a recommendation? Or no, no, it's fucking gut wrenching. Yeah, dude. It's just. I, what I, are some other films that people have pitched you where they're like, "Oh, you got to see this. You're going to be sca- sad as fuck after." Well, just real quick, you, you triggering when uh, I got pitched uh, a movie. The last Uber ride I took, I got pitched a movie called After Church, and uh, it was one of those Uber drivers that goes, "Hey, where am I taking you?" And I go, "Oh, comedy club." This night he's like, oh, you're a comedian. I was like, yeah. He's like, man, I got a movie script. I was like, pitch away. He goes, it's called After Church. I go, what's the premise? He goes, well, you know how everyone's always like going to church, like, oh man, I'm a good guy. I don't do anything wrong. I'm holier than now. I'm like, sure. He goes, well, then they leave church and it's all gambling and butt fucking. And I go, oh, in that it, order? It yeah. I go, it is. And he goes, yeah. So and you I, mean, yeah. So it's so it's two rounds of craps. <laughs> yeah. He goes, it's all because it's all the stuff that happens after church. So you call it After Church. I was like. I wouldn't not not see it. I I don't right, I don't want to not see this, but here's my card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I also then I, t- I told it to a buddy of mine, and he goes, "Gambling and butt fucking sound like two hilarious like '80s beach cops." But it, but it's like it it the guy always the chief's always like gambling butt fucking, and he's like it's butt fucking, it's German, <laughs> gambling. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, gambling yeah. and befooking. Yeah. Hey guys, comedian Adam right here. Hope you're enjoying this episode of the About Last Night podcast. Boy, I gotta tell you, I've been feeling good lately. And the reason why? Koi CBD. That's right. Back in the game. Feeling like my best self. Look, Koi CBD is the best CBD company in the business. I don't care what you hear from other people, other comics. Koi CDB, CBD. See, I got so much BBD, CBD inside me, I ain't even fucking talking right. You know why? Because I slept well on the Koi CBD gummies. That's right. They've got everything from tinctures to bath bombs to gummies. Uh, they got a skincare line coming soon. They got hand sanitizer during these times. It's very important. So... What you want to do, if you want to start feeling like your best self, you want to take some Koi CBD bombs, put them in the bath, okay? What? Yeah, come on in. Jackson, I'm doing an ad for my podcast. Can you say, hi? Hello. Say, I use CBD gummies. I use CBD gummies. From Koi. From Koi. Koi's the best. Koi's the best. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. I feel like my best self. I feel like my best self. Look at these muscles. Look at these muscles. Kiss them. If you get Koi CBD right now, you go to koicbd.com, promo code about last night, 
and you get 20% off your first order. That's incredible. Bath bombs, tinctures, skincare, hand sanitizer, gummies. They've got everything. They're my favorite. It's who I use. So start using it for you too. I can't recommend these guys enough. They're homies and all this shit works. Jackson, say 20% off. 20% off. If you use the promo code about last night. If you use the promo code about last night. About last night. About last night. Show them those guns again. Kiss them. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the episode. If you could be a beach cop, what beach would you want to work at? Miami. Yeah. I remember going In what there. decade? Oh, probably the 80s. I know. Short shorts. The 80s seemed like nothing went wrong. Yeah, but. Ask Madonna. We'll be right back. That is thanks. Woof, that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you're right, but it, but I don't any know. footage from the '80s, it just seems like everyone is is rollerblading, oh, dude, to cocaine. Yeah, to yeah. There's they're always excited about where they're headed to. The destination is better than the journey. Absolutely. Um, boom the, boxes, boom boxes, headphones, cell phones, leg warm. No, not in the '80s. Not cell phones. Were people wearing condoms in the '80s? No, no. I think they were invented in '97. Were they really? No. Okay. They're, I'm very gullible. <laughs> I also, yeah, yeah. 1897. <laughs> when were they? Um, they were, the first profo is like, I think in the 1800s. So what were people using before that? It was just raw dog out? city. The pull out method yeah, the in the 1800s? Method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has this been documented? The pull out method? Yeah, the colonize. Are they teaching that in history classes uh, over Zoom right now? The, the sex ed, the history of sex ed. Maybe David Attenborough does it. The first ever pull out happened in 1855. I was working on that yesterday. Oh, yeah. I heard him. Oh, here's a very short right? in there. Here's the first pull out from the seal. I from said, the, oh, yeah. He only does animal uh, animals, sexual yeah, encounters. Like, oh, dude. <laughs> like he, David, we what, got a whole about thing. people? Fuck people. Fuck people. I Soon the, all the humans will be burned to a crisp. Unless they're the people parrots <laughs> of Peopleton. I get turned on by animals fornicating. Oh, maybe because I own a zoo and practice on them myself. Zoo loop. <laughs> David. The best Hi, animal the best. to penetrate. No, no, David, David. <laughs> yeah. David, David, we're rolling <laughs> live. Yeah. I know. I know. I've never been more certain. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> he's just said, he's throwing all caution to the wind. I love him, dude. I mean, there are people that are uh, taking chances during this pandemic because they're like, look, I don't know if we're coming out of it, so let me just, you know, throw some darts. Yeah. Now, people are moving. Would you think about moving out of L.A. and starting your comedy career elsewhere? I think because my main bag is still acting and a lot of the jobs, I think I know that right now we can't go in and see people for auditions and stuff like I did self tape today. It'll stay like that for a while, I think, for another six months. At least. Welcome. Good What's to up, see guys? you guys. Hey, he gets continue it. to walk by if you're fans. Good. Hell yeah. It was gorgeous. That. that was great. Wow. Yeah. One guy, two girls, huh? Guys, I want to see that, that show. Guy. Yeah, good for um, that guy. That guy is killing it. Someone's having a good 2020. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't move. No, no. If you if you had to move, where would you go? So if I, LA shut down, if the business, if I Hollywood was, moved, to I like, was working on a, or I was up auditioning for a show, getting kind of far right before the pandemic that was going to shoot in Boston. So you would have. I would have had to move there. That would have been cool. Yeah, I mean, I I would have. I've been to Boston many times. Uh, at the great comedy scene. So I feel like, like you could blend into becoming a Boston guy, too. Yeah. You'd find your cheers. You'd be the... Who would you be? John! Like, uh, <laughs> I think I'm Sam Malone. Yeah. I'm not. Um, no, I, you could pull that off. I'm more of a uh, Danny DeVito. I'm married to was someone he in who's cheers? There. No, oh. but he was married to Rhea Perlman. <laughs> Still is. Um, I just love the DeVito. What are they doing right now? God. I want to say fucking... I love that guy so much. He's a hero of mine, actually. He, uh, I want to meet him just to truly see how uh, tiny he is. 4'11", I think. I looked it up the other day. For real? Yeah, I think so. Uh, last thing you Googled uh, was Danny DeVito's height. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think about that? If you did get pulled over or go to jail for like drunk driving or something and they did pull up your Google searches? Oh, I always have this joke with my friends where I go, I was like, here, you just need to get rid of this computer. Mm -hmm. I have friends that have spare keys. <laughs> And I'm like, if, if it looks like I'm going, no matter where I am in the world, if I like text you this thing, you need to break into my apartment, steal my computer, 
and burn it. I always, <laughs> yeah, I always think about that too. What my uh, buddies who were married with kids when they have like their office like way away from the rest of the house. I'm like, that's so suspect. You got to set up an office close to the kitchen or like I don't know on the same level as like next to the kid's bedroom so that if it's so far away. Yeah, but I think that a lot of you don't get to decide, right? If you like a house, yeah, it's like whatever, wherever the room is. Oh, uh, you're right. You it's know, always the room that's just like looks like a Peloton can fit there, and it's like the Beast, Beauty and the Beast. They're like, don't go in the West Wing. <laughs> All my porn, my there. Peloton is there. <laughs> You've this said fall. Peloton a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it's porn. Okay, that uh, you're still living in the same spot. Yeah, same spot. We're so we're super close. You super and I. close. I love this area. I I keep yeah, seeing people too. going further north, and I'm just not. Uh, it's so far. I keep wh- waving goodbye. I keep yeah. going. Great. See ya. Take care of yourself. Let now. me know how that Sherman Oaks Vons looks. Lose like. my number. <laughs> um, no, I love this area, man. I've lived in this area for most of my time in L.A. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird being out this way with uh, with not all the Sunset Boulevard action that you usually get, right? Like yeah. this, like. Where do you guys it? live? We're doing crowd work right now. What's Where are your, you guys from? What's your pin number? <laughs> Austin? Oh, we were just talking about Austin. So Austin's becoming kind of like the next spot that everyone, right? Good to see you too. Everyone Take says care Austin's yourself. Like, you live that way. Also, uh, what if you also meant Austin? She meant Austin, like yeah. that way. I'm like, uh, I think you like, mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think you mean East. By the way, you, you can live. always, you can always, <laughs> it's good to know when like someone just completely loses their sense of direction and then you're like, you mean uh, West? Like, nah, I, I refer to locations in terms of that way or this way. <laughs> yeah. Lick my finger, feel the wind. Um, well, you can't say that in 2020. No. Wow. <laughs> As a lick, white guy, lick my finger, Did feel we just the wind. Hear sirens. Yeah, wasn't that a Pocahontas lyric? I, I was gonna say it was a Robert Frost poem. <laughs> Either way, so David Ambrose, have... <laughs> lick my finger, <laughs> feel, feel, feel the wind. The wind. <laughs> I'm just, David Ambrose. Yeah, yeah. He's like I'm constantly coffee table quotes. About to take my last breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, did you guys? Uh, what was the first thing that you guys bought when uh, when the pandemic uh, struck? We'll be able to read your lips. Yeah, camera for those feet. Let me know when I'm close. Lipstick, food. Yeah. Food. By the way, she just with a whole with a with a closed uh, hand like she was doing a sock puppet, dabbed her lips, and I go lipstick. What is wrong with me to thinking someone would put a, on lipstick with a closed? <laughs> um, okay. Thank you for taking that bullet because I was gonna say Carmex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what type of food? Like meats, snacks. By the way, this is the point of the podcast when you can go ahead and just turn off your uh, your radio. Uh, what uh, what what did, what kind of snacks? What did you go for? Well, because this says a lot about you, right? Because if you're like, oh shit, I might not be able to eat for six to eight months. What did you stock up on? Cheese, cheese. Yeah, something I'm not going to argue with that. Something that lasts six to eight months. Yeah, can cheese last six to no. eight months? No. <laughs> What's the shelf life of cheese? Said nobody ever. Let's move on. Say- um, <laughs> This uh, is this has been our uh, <laughs> <laughs> guys. We did it. We got we did a whole did, cheese though, section. I used to work at a grocery store. What's that? This is a peak moment for the podcast. Yeah. What's the shelf life of cheese? Wow. Yeah. The other stuff was just <laughs> Boy. no good. Apparently, yeah. she goes. This is it. This is where it peaked the interest. <laughs> I used to work at a grocery store though in high school, and before podcasts were even a thing, uh, this was in the uh, late '90s, early 2000s, and I wanted. I wanted to do some sort of a radio show, which I guess would have been a podcast, from the break room because the amount of shit that was happening on a daily basis, drama at the grocery store, you don't even know. You walk into a Ralph's now, you see all the employees just like doing their thing, putting their heads down. Man, there is, there was a... I think this is the plot of Superstore. No, but because that's like takes place in like a Costco. It's right, isn't it? Like it's like a it's, it's like a grocery a, store. It's a Walmart. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm t- I worked at an Albertsons. I'm talking local supermarket. Hold on, judges. Same thing. Yeah, I'm with. All right, you're from that way, so I don't way, think we're on the same page. In Austin, <laughs> those are the same thing. No, no, but that you couldn't. If you and I couldn't pitch a show right now, where someone's like, hold on. David Attenborough, let me got this. So what if we pitched a show where it takes place in a break room? Someone's like, yeah, it's superstore. No, no, no. We only sell food. They'd be like, get out of my office. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, grocery stores don't sell TVs and balloons and shit like that. They do sell balloons. <laughs> All right. All right. They don't have guys doing root beer float announcements. They do not. See, that's what I did. There you go. My boss. Oh, you pulled, were the my boss. Yeah, yeah. Let me live a normal life. My boss pulled me aside and he goes, 
hey, I know you're like, you know, trying to be an actor and, you you know, you're always trying to make jokes and like sometimes it's a little inappropriate, like, you know, but 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 I would love you. We got the Ruby floats coming on this summer. If you can get on the mic and do a big announcement for us. So I get on there, you press a little button, it goes boop, and I go, oh, it's hot as fuck outside. And then he just pulls the thing and he goes, Adam, what are you doing? And he goes, you told me to like be fun and whatever. He's like, you can't curse. I was like, you didn't say that. So I get back on and I'm like, oh man, it's it's to- it's toasty outside. Nothing washes down, nothing, nothing sweets, nothing, nothing, nothing makes your throat all yeah. nice and warm. Like nothing a- coats the throat, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. deep throat of a Yeah, yeah. Who wants to deep throat some Hagen does? Who wants to deep throat this head? Of a root beer float. <laughs> He's like, Adam, you can't pause too much in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good SNL sketch. Yeah. There, uh, there was something, though, about the guy who works at a franchise grocery store for 40 plus years. Like Dan Boyle, who is the boss's boss, called boobs fun bags. This was 1999. Fun bags. I'd never heard that. I was like, what? He's like, He's like oh, look at the fun bags on that girl. I was like, I don't, what, what does that mean? You're like, get off the mic. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying it into, yeah, the, yeah. into the last That's speaker. not an announcement. I stole so much stuff from that Albertsons, by the way. What was the best thing you ever stole? Oh, man, I would steal deodorant. I'd steal a case of uh, Dr. Pepper. I'd steal, uh, man, what else did I steal? Booze, film. I, I, that's where I thought you were going. I and love, by the way, I'm not started, outing myself. They no, caught no, no. me, by and the I way, got fired. No, no, no. Listen, I, I, I'm your alibi, bro. Yeah. I'm saying it was funny that I asked you what you stole, and I'm thinking, because that's in my mind, yeah. I'm like, it's high ticket items. Yeah. You're like, deodorant, <laughs> Mac Dr. <and> Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, things you take in a camper. Sports uh, <laughs> Illustrated. <laughs> things at Albertsons. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I just saw Sebastian Maniscalco. Do you guys know Sebastian Maniscalco? Uh, it went on uh, Family Feud with his family. Oh. I love that. And boy, did that get me jacked up for uh, for for something to watch. Uh, to, I, I having something to look forward to. Family Feud is my favorite game show. Oh, Steve all Harvey is. Uh, what you say? Does not get enough credit. No, for he's... his. Uh, all he has to do sometimes is look in the camera after somebody says something oddly pervy or racist, and just give a look, and it just. Buys them also like five minutes of TV time. You know, I do like a fifteen minute bit about Steve Harvey hosting Family Feud. Oh my god, I love, I love it so. Wait, who was the other family by the way that Sebastian was going up against? I don't know. I, I don't know. The Devitos. <laughs> That'd be great. And the Manis. The Manis Galcos. The Devitos. Great if it's another Sicilian. super Italian family. Hey. Uh, I can't wait to see his dad name. A vowel. Oh, <laughs> show me it. <laughs> That's a different game show. Yeah, that was the Gandolfinis. Oh yeah. The, oh. Were they on a? Uh, oh. Uh, no. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I like to buy a bow. Is that Gandolfini? Fuck it, why? Oh my god! Fucking ridiculous shit. You know what I mean? That guy, man. Did he ever host SNL? No. Why not? That's a bummer. That would have been great. He would have been awesome. Let's go through a list of people that never hosted SNL that should. Clark Gable. <laughs> Charlton Heston. Oh yeah. Uh, There's a. And that's it. That's it. I feel like everybody else that should have hosted hosted. <laughs> no, uh, I. You know. Are there? You know what it is? Is sometimes that a comic who is so damn funny doesn't get a chance to host because they're maybe not mainstream enough. Yes. And I think like looking around the room and seeing some of these great comics, like I wonder, like Rogan, has Rogan ever hosted? Oh no, yeah. SNL. Yeah, he. he I think he's the actor. biggest guy in the world right now. Michael Keaton has he? He probably he has. has. He has. He has a few times. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He's in that did, classic Farley yeah. sketch when his uh, wig yeah. comes off. Uh, yeah. This is. Um, this is a bummer being having the chairs all up, and I'm sure everyone who's been in this room has talked about that. But it's uh, it's kind of like, and it makes you realize how intimate the room really is. It's like when you, I don't know if you ever went to Toys R Us as, <clears throat> as an adult. Wait a minute, just so I'm clear, where a kid can be a kid. Yeah. Okay, we're in the same. Is that page. what their slogan was? Yeah. I thought. Oh, yeah, that's right. What I don't. Was, what was I don't want to grow up because I'm a Toys R Us kid. kid. There's a million. To- we're. To- a Toys R Us that I can play with. Yeah, but what's we got to figure out what what's, what's from said, toys but, to trains to no before video games. But video before game. that, what what precedes a million things that I can play with? Because that's that's important. Yeah, I think where There's a kid a can million. be a kid is Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> <laughs> which by the way filed for bankruptcy. No. Yeah. So Kevin Spacey, you're gonna have to find a different ball pit. Keep going. Shots fired. He just walks right by. <laughs> He's like, listen, I am here, and I'm at a ball pit right now. Lucky this- for you, I bring my own ball pit. Lucky for you, I have two Academy Awards. Not what I asked, Kevin. 
Um, by the way, I saw him out in about in L.A. Not recently. Recently. Was he wearing a Nine Lives T-shirt? Uh, he yeah. Hey, look, Spacey, you're a he, great he actor. He's wearing a shirt that says, a "You can't cancel me." I was like, "You did. We did. We did." But he's like, "You can't erase Nine Lives." And Bro. if you haven't seen Nine Lives, here's the plot. Uh, <sighs> Kevin Spacey's a rich dude, and his kids. Real are, movie, by the way. His kids are uh, desperate for attention that they're rich. Working constantly, father is not given them. So, uh, in a uh, stroke of bad luck, uh, he's up in his tower, working away, penthouse, lightning strikes. He's yelling at his fucking cat. You know, stop looking at me, cat. Something, you know, I'm paraphrasing. And, uh, no, I think that was it. And him and the cat, <laughs> like him and the cat switch. Switch places. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Wow, I can finally lick my own ass. <laughs> Okay, Kevin. No, there's no improvising. No ad libbing, Spacey. No, listen, I'll be in my trailer pooping in sand. How much do you? What, think? Kevin? You're not really a cat. How much do you think they paid him for that? Because whatever the whatever or price who passed is on it too much, or did somebody go? Look, oh. we know you have this lawsuit coming down the pipeline. You got to do something that's completely out of left field. By the way, everyone passed on that. Yeah, everyone. Like, because he was still doing actual big cats passed on that movie. Garfield <laughs> passed was that on that Jeff movie. Bridges, he was Garfield's oh, agent. Listen, man, I uh, I rep a lot of cats in the business, man. I'm a cool cat. <laughs> Who are some of your most famous cats that you represent, Jeff? Um, I uh, I represent uh, Rum Tom Cogger. <laughs> What about what is it? Judy Lady? Dent. She's not a cat. She was in the movie cat, though, man. <laughs> Wait, well, who's Lazy Cat? Angry Cat? Uh, no, Grumpy Cat. <laughs> I, I had a real, I got a real thing right now. I went to Grumpy Cat's birthday party in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you open with that wherever you go? I close with it. I can't top that. Guys, I went to Grumpy Cat's birthday party. Good night. Wait, how? Who invited you? What was the party like? My Were friend was doing PR there? for the cat. Yes, this is real. How many followers does this cat have? It, she's dead now. She's she passed away. Oh, her name was um her name was Tartar Sauce for real Tartar, and her nickname was Tard. <laughs> oh, for real. Oh God, who did she leave her um? fortune to the, the the owners i guess kevin spacey no uh <laughs> in a weird twist who, of fate. who owned tartar sauce um this couple i met them they were very sweet and this cat were they bummed or were they just like wearing i didn't meet her them at, i didn't see them at the funeral yeah but i did there was a funeral i have no idea oh. um, but there was a wake um so i'm i'm there at the so my friends i was in new york just like doing press or something i was working and someone goes hey um uh, a friend of mine's like, I'm like, oh, what are we doing? Do you want to hang out? She's like, yeah, I'd love to, but um, I, I'm doing PR and I'm covering. Do you know Grumpy Cat? And I was like, I, I do. I'm doing her birthday party. And it was a, it was. Was Grumpy, she pumped about that? Was this like a Grumpy Cat? A step down or was no? pissed? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> she, you couldn't tell. Tell your face because she sat there on a pillow as there was a line of people to just take pictures. I have a picture of her. Oh my god. She looks very disinterested. But was your friend like? You know, was she like, I was up for, you know, Jaden Smith's racquetball tournament, but I couldn't get it, so I'm doing Grumpy Cat's birthday. Well, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a time when I, when animals, especially on Instagram, yeah. were huge. Yeah. There was one called Lil Bub, and the only reason I know this was, I was doing an interview one time, and they were like, oh, we're going to have like a shot of you and the other guests on Whoa. for the thing. And I was like, okay, whatever. Yep. And then they walk in with this little cat named Lil Bub. And they're like, do you know? And my publicist is like, do you know Lil Bub? And I was like, no. That's a robot laughing. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Hey, I'll text you, Minnie. Can you guys hear that? Can you um, hear the, the sound effect? Of a robot fart? Kind of. <laughs> it's like, nice. Meh, meh. <laughs> fart, fart. <laughs> okay. Well, All right, well, let's stop. Okay, Rosie. Um, but so, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so she was, I think that there there was this idea that those were going to, that animals, famous animals were going to be big, like Lassie and Rin Tin Tin. Uh, Lassie is dead, right? Yeah, but there were a lot of Lassies. <laughs> That's a documentary, a sad documentary. <laughs> 
It's just like the movie Marriage Story. You don't want to watch it. I would like to see a documentary about all the famous called uh, Too Many Lassies actor <laughs> actor uh, animal actors because there was the animal actor show at Universal. Oh, I've been to it many times. I, I've actually been to it every time I go. And uh, it's really gotten bad. Yeah. Well, there used to be a trick where like a monkey would come out with a woman's bra. I remember that. That would get a big laugh. There was also the thing that I got called on stage for when they had a giant condor soar down from the top. That's the other thing I remember. They yeah, had me big get time. on stage. I'm wearing a universal shirt, fanny pack. Because you worked there. <clears throat> yeah, but this is when I was a child. And my mom took my sister and I. And I'm on stage. <clears throat> and they go, just do this. Oh, the mic's out. Check, check. Check, check. Can you guys hear us out there? Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you're enjoying this episode. Obviously, it's a very difficult time for everyone right now. We're all uh, challenged in finding a day-to-day routine that uh, that makes our lives uh, consistent and awesome. And if there's something that's interfering with your happiness right now or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. Uh, BetterHelp is a professional counseling service online, private, and it's so convenient. Um, I've used it for a little bit now. It's truly the only way uh, that i found uh, to help get uh, my own issues dealt with on my own time uh, at my own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions plus chat and text with your licensed professional counselor right now. They're specialized in depression, anger, stress, anxiety, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief or relationships, uh, sleeping, which I have a lot of uh, trouble with, trauma, self-esteem. Anything that you share with them is confidential. And guess what? If you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, at any time, you can request a new one for no additional charge. There's 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states available worldwide. And again, there's four ways to communicate with them. Text, chat, phone, and video. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. It's available on any desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS apps. Schedule a video or phone session, generally weekly, unless your therapist schedules more. Uh, unless you just are really not sleeping and need to get some uh, some some additional chats in, uh, there's broad expertise in the network, which may not uh, which may not be locally available in many areas. Financial aid is available for those who qualify. It's secure. It's convenient. It's professional, and above all, it's affordable. All right, it's truly the most affordable option I found. So right now. All ALN listeners are going to get 10% off your first month with a discount code about last night. So why not get started today and start making some changes for the better in your life? You deserve it. So go to betterhelp.com slash about last night. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor that you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash about last night. Betterhelp.com slash about last night and get 10% off your first month with promo code about last night. And now back to the episode. Was it still recording? Oh, can they can they God. still hear us? Are you guys out? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Enjoy your uh, rest of your night. Enjoy. What what does the night uh, consist of after this? Boxing. I love how you have like the little hands in there. <clears throat> Wandering sunset. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, there's more stuff open, right? Oh my God! I love that. Nice. I've I have a buddy that has a a box of those. Well, oh, that was weird to say out loud. But yeah, you have two of them. All right, yeah. that's good. If you can't see what she's doing, it just sounds creepy. <laughs> yeah, she's got two of the uh, tiny. Uh, what do you are they just called? Tiny hands. Where can you buy them at? Were they gifted to you? A toy store in Austin. I yeah. thought you were gonna say they're my real hands. <laughs> they're like, oh. thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, boy, they are. Oh. That's got to be a thing, right? Oh, that looks nice. Oh, that looks fun. You guys go. Oh god! Oh god! Whoa. <laughs> yep. yep. Tiny. <laughs> hey, feet, OnlyFans is probably a page. With tiny hands, with guys. Tiny hands is probably. Whoa! Yep. This guys. is boys. See, the comedy store doesn't lose any of its weirdness. Save as long it for as it OnlyFans. We're giving it away for free right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Take ladies. care. Have a good one. Uh, uh, I don't think. Hey, it, the fellas are back. The boys yeah. are back in town, boy. Whoa, whoa, that guy's that? got a guest shirt on. Fuck uh, yeah, dude! Did you get that at guess? Guess. Nice. nice. Can you hear me too? Can you hear me now? Let's uh. Sp- about last night. Adam Ray, John Kite. Bye, ladies. 
Bye. Enjoy, Enjoy the night. I don't think mine's on, by the way. Yeah. Get- can you hear me or no? Oh, great. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just, I'm just bombing. Yo, fellas, where you headed? Where, where, uh, where's the party at tonight? <laughs> I feel like you're 16 years old. <laughs> That's the thing with these masks; you can only see from, uh, from eyes above, and it's really. I love that. That, that sounds like a, a deposition in court, <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor. That's the thing about these masks. I can only see, what? Oh shit! Oh, my yeah, yeah. Lord. <laughs> you can only see from eyes above. Listen, yeah. let me tell you, Tony Danza. Tony Danza. Um, there is a. Are, are they doing a reboot of Who's the Boss? Yeah. Trust me, I've been texting oh, with his I manager. Oh, I know. That's what I was asking. I go, I go, uh, I go. Someone's got to play Tony's son. He go, and then I can't remember what he texted me back. Actually, I'll just fucking read it because it was a uh, me. Read it on to, air. It was re- Yeah, it was me trying to pitch myself to. Uh, I'm gonna call as your agent. Here I go. So I go. Uh, <clears throat> I go. Holy shit! I go. Congrats. Is there a son part? He goes. Ha ha. I go. I'll take that as a hard maybe. This is about when Who's the Boss got announced that they're doing a reboot, right? And it's uh, a sequel. It's called Two's the Boss. And my buddy is uh, is uh, his uh, manager. So I go, holy shit. I go, is there a son part? He goes, ha ha. I go, I'll take that as a hard maybe. He said, ha ha, Alyssa is an only child. Show picks up 30 years after the last. And I said, we can figure it out. Uh, he goes, so Tony got on board and adopted an adult son late in life. I go, yep. <laughs> Which is a By great storyline. Great story. So you'd be like, hey, so uh, I know you're Alyssa. Can I call you Alyssa? Can I call you your real name? I know you're my daughter, but, you know, I thought how great it would be to have a son, you know, that's adopted, so he's not blood, so you're single, he's single. Plot twist. <laughs> uh and so the networks are going with it. Yeah, so we're shooting next fall. So we'll be uh, yeah. <laughs> we're out next fall. Yeah, it's yeah. There's uh there's no world where I don't uh, uh wind up on that show. I mean, even if I'm an extra and they just like... Yeah, but do you know Tony very well? Oh, I had him on the podcast. Jeffrey Scott, ladies and gentlemen. There nice hair. Is. That quarantine hair. Boy, fucking long and sexy and COVID-free, hopefully. You and I have somehow both uh, gotten uh, haircuts. Yeah, I... Um, well, look, if I didn't if I didn't get a, uh, a haircut, um, I mean, it would just be... There, there was a point when I... You know, somebody had resent me that um, video of Fabio breaking his nose uh, on a roller coaster when the bird oh, ran yeah. into him, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, there <laughs> the kid who sent it to me was like, "By the way, there's there's no there's no actual proof he got hit by the bird. He just showed up and his nose was bleeding. And there were feathers everywhere. Conspiracy." I was like, "Who's who's filling the conspiracy that Fabio and also who do faked you his own for? nose break? Who, you're, what are you who are you hired by? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah." Uh, but uh, big Fabio Corporation. But I did see who's like, what is that guy doing right now? By the way, Fabio. Yeah, like why wasn't he featured in that celebrity naked vote video? I don't know. Did you see that? Uh, no, but I heard about it. Did and who, for yeah. real, it was on Instagram. It was yeah. uh, another uh, just big ploy with uh, celebs to get the vote out, which which hey, I'm all about. But um. Uh, yeah, but come on. They were all buck naked. naked and yeah, yeah, go, yeah. But he, go, I'm naked. I'm naked. But Mark hold on. Ruffalo. Just tell people who's in it, though. It's, yeah, it was Mark Ruffalo. Um, who we've seen naked. So, but, so listen, I, I, I'm already on the old fan, of, only fans. Enough nudie Ruffalo. We get it. We get it. You got a cop. We've seen your Incredible Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't uh, like Chris, it when you're horny. Chris Rock, uh, Sarah Silverman. <clears throat> and Sarah was, uh, was a little, it was, you know, did, did, uh, if you're gonna get naked, I think you got to do what she did, which was like make it a little interesting, you know. But everybody else was like neck up. Yeah. And then there was a. Uh, I didn't. I'm telling you, but but people were sort of making not jokes about it, but like saying. Well, I think it's just oversaturation of people feeling. Uh, I wasn't gonna vote, but I saw naked celebrities, and that, I think I might. That's what I'm saying. Had I not seen Mark Ruffalo's tits. Jay Mandium is in the building. When is Jay Mandium not in the building? Brother, he was doing his podcast. Jay Mandium. Right here. <clears throat> Jay Mandium uh, wearing his mask, looking like a duck. <clears throat> you, uh, that's not a, that's not a, uh, that's not, what's the uh, name tag on your uh, jacket say, Jay? Dr. Oh. Mandium. <laughs> 
You do look like you came straight from uh, from doing rounds at Cedar Sinai. Yeah, yeah, but 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 on a show on the CW. Look at that chain wallet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guy's the hippest doctor in the ER. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's, he's like, oh my god, she's suffering from a broken what heart. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, you mind if I come back and check on this patient? I got to sell a pot to some skateboarders out back. Jay, what would be what would be your um, your doctor name if you were on a CW doctor show? We can yeah, hear we you. Can. We, we got you, you, buddy. You project. You were in plays. Yeah, I was going to say someone went to theater school. Yeah, make it quick, Jay, because you're not on the mic that this is going to go out yeah. to the world on. So Jay's right now, doing his own podcast we're just from sitting the patio. In, we're just sitting inside. We're his audience. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Finkelstein. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people are like, he's adopted? <laughs> yeah. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's no. That's I, I, I like what Jay's doing. We've got a group headed towards Saddle Ranch and two fellows. Leaving just Saddle Ranch. Leaving Saddle Ranch. <laughs> yep. Guys, it's a four in two out policy at Saddle Ranch tonight. There's not there's not one day I don't drive by Saddle Ranch and think, man, I gotta ride the bull before I leave this place. I thought you were gonna say, Man, do I need a Yargarita? <laughs> Is that what they sell I there? I don't know. They sell they giant, big drinks. They sell giant cotton candies. You wanna hear the first time I ever went to Saddle Ranch? Yes. Fucking hammered. Came from the comedy store actually, doing the open mic. Walked down there. It was uh it was kind of a banner night because uh I think I'd signed up five, six weeks in a row, hadn't gotten on, got on, uh, got a couple laughs. That was enough to carry me into the next day. Yeah, and, sure. But really just ride the high for that night. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. I'm on Sunset Boulevard. I just got laughs at the comedy store. Good night, L.A. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I'm retiring. Yeah, yeah. Let me go to the Did Saddle Ranch. Drop the mic at an open <laughs> mic? There's like 10 other guys he, coming up. He took the mic to Saddle Ranch, dropped it this there. This is mine. Okay, buddy. So Saddle Ranch is popping. And uh, this when is, is it not? This is 2007, and Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey uh, are there, and uh, working. <laughs> no, uh, hanging out. Wait, Just was this 2007? Out? Maybe it was 2005. Yeah, that feels a little too. Yeah, maybe this was. Just because like everybody would have their phones out and taking pictures. Yeah, and there were 2005. The, the that camera, wasn't happening. The camera phones. Maybe it was 2001. Not great. No, because I. When did you move here? 2001, but I saw them post college. I feel like we got to go to like a Jessica Simpson timeline. No, with fuck, you. When were they dating? Maybe, it, maybe it wasn't them. <laughs> I was gonna say. I've been carrying was around. Was it two lookalike Hollywood and Highland photos? <laughs> it was the way Spider-Man you do Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Oh man, it was a <laughs> dude. It was how funny is that? It was just a guy I thought was Nick. L- I just was fucked up and saw a couple making out in a booth. It was a guy who was fixing everyone. a thermostat who made a ninety-eight <laughs> degrees joke. You're like, that must have been Lachey. <laughs> and that girl that came out of the bathroom was definitely with him. Yeah, it's just Jessica Simpson. Who was the? Uh, who was? The, but that is a at least at that time. Whether they were there or not, feels like a place, uh, a, a hubbub where uh, where stars would go to on Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, you I hear? love that spot. I it just you know why? It's a good rowdy time. Yeah, I mean, a, a a friend had her birthday party there. We all went. Angry cat. Yeah, grumpy cat. Grumpy Angry cat. cat sister. <laughs> why do I fucking? Yeah, hey, Eric. I don't know if you know this, but Jonathan went to Grumpy Cat's birthday party in New York. Yeah. Before she he. She, <laughs> before she passed away from all the fun we had at her birthday party. <laughs> <clears throat> there, uh, there's got to be other cats or owners of cats that saw the uh, trajectory of Grumpy Cat. Yeah, no, there said, were. I said there was a time out here, like I feel like around 2011, 2012, where people were, were like forcing their pets. Well, they're to... like Instagram had came out in, in 10, 2010, right? So they were like, oh, they're. Dog yeah. accounts, yeah, yeah, we're but like famous. Did anyone get close to the Grumpy Cat fame? I don't think so. I don't think because if you say Grumpy Cat, people know who the heck you're talking about. I wonder if someone just tried to like dangle. You know, I don't know what cats get turned on by, but if somebody was like, "We're gonna go in a completely different direction," horny cat, and they're like, "I think that cat's just fucking." <laughs> That's just the- that's like David Attenborough. Cause that was a joke that I tried to work on where I'm like, you know, that they'll like see a squid, but they'll kind of like, how do you know it? That's the same squid. Yeah. 
because to follow the squid's journey or some of these, they have to follow them for many for a long time before they give them something drama worthy. Yeah. The networks are like, you nailed it. Do you think they give him a script or do you think he's just watching the footage and just <laughs> I, making even up the animals? From- <laughs> that squid's off book. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, come on, who's that squid's agent? I, Tom Hanks. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Tom Hanks, you rep a squid? Well, yes, I saw how well uh, Jeff Bridges was doing with cats, <laughs> so I decided to rep squids. You ever seen that uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea? You you rep that squid? Well, I uh, I tried. <laughs> We lost out. <laughs> Do you rep the chimp in that uh, Matt LeBlanc movie? Yes. Uh, wait, it's, uh, hold on, it's called uh, MVP, Most Valuable Primate. Boom! <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, I think so. Oh, he my God. He plays hockey. There's a baseball one, too. That's how, I wonder if they had to do two more seasons of Friends just so people would forget that he did that movie. Or or Joey. That's what, so that, that, did, oh, he, that did well, didn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah it existed. Yeah. I mean, well is tough because it's like after Friends, you know, one of the biggest shows of all time. Yeah. They all had shows. Didn't David Schumer have like the David Schumer show? No, they offered them. I was the only guy who didn't have my own show. Dude, I saw your Schwimmer. I do a show. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Like, Rachel, uh, I, 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 I'm still, I, I'm still uh, waiting. We were out of play. <laughs> Uh, you think? Uh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ben. <laughs> uh, ben. That's an impression nobody will ever. G- you'll never get an applause break for a for a, a, a spot on David. Someone's Schiller. like, who? <laughs> All right. In, a, in, <laughs> a, in, a, in an empty room, I got a who. <laughs> How he hasn't come up with some sort of like, you know, I'm offering uh, two for one swimming lessons down at Yoast Pool. <laughs> Yoast. That's an actual pool in Edmonds, yeah, Washington. I was going to say, definitely at the JCC. Yoast Pool is where I almost drowned because my stepbrother, uh, who I think I was 10 and he was eight. What's his name? Ryan. I hope you're listening, Ryan. Dude, he was, uh, we somehow, I think he was on my shoulders and we floated out to a part of the pool that was deeper than we thought. And he started panicking and shoving my head underwater. And it's the deep end, so I have nothing to grab onto. And he truly, imagine being underwater and somebody grabbing your head and your face because he's like, I can't, he's trying to hold on for dear life. A drowning man. Yeah, and I literally uh, was like, oh, this is how at Yoast Pool, I'm never going to be able to do my David Schwimmer impression calling back to this location because I'm going to die here. But We'll be right back. The ghost of Schwim wasn't dead. The Ghost of Schwim. The Ghost of Schwim. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston was in uh, the Leprechaun movie. Brother. I wonder. Th- there's got to be more of those deep cuts that pop up where you go, oh, that person I'll was- tell you something. In every major horror movie franchise, somebody went on to be incredibly famous. Critters. Who's in Critters? Leonardo DiCaprio's in the third or the fourth one. No, For not. real. They yeah. did four Critters? I think they did more than that, but I think Leo only did one of them. What's the first movie you saw that got you terrified to go to bed as a child? Um, the trailer for Child's Play. Oh God, not even the full dude film. I was like, "This doll does what?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was pretty freaky. Uh, yeah, that was terrifying because it was. I don't know if that was like the Jim Henson Creature Shop, but they made it was that a kid. my buddy doll. So it was already something that existed. Oh yeah. So the thing is, like about Nightmare on Elm Street or like all those other, th- they had to create that. Now, you didn't thing. know a guy in a mask that lived in your neighborhood. No, no, unless he played hockey. Yeah. Which I grew up in a hockey community, or and I was like, like "Hey, Chris Nagy, <clears throat> shout out to Chris Nagy," um, or your dad's weird friend that were like you know wore a mask to spook you and like steal your dad's beer. I'm like, "It's noon. I see you. <laughs> Put on some pants, Frank. We know it's you. No, no, oh, it's not Frank. I'm Jason. <laughs> I need a beer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Frank. This Ugh. is the only house with Natty Light and Strawberry Zima. Oh, by the way, love Zima. Loved or love. They don't make it anymore. <clears throat> Currently in love. Do you know that you can't? Uh, it doesn't come up on breathalyzers. What? That's why they stopped making it. Well, you got a what and a who. <laughs> who knew? Guys, I'm back. Are we filming the ad for Zima's comeback? <laughs> yeah. What was the What was the fake doctor's name when he went to go to the convention to pick it up in all the Zima commercials? I, I don't know. Dollar, Dr. Galakowitz. For He's real? He's like, are you Dr. Galakowitz? He goes, I'm Dr. Galakowitz. Yes, I am. Oh, my Google God. It. Wait, Zima. So that was it? It couldn't come up on. So people yeah. were getting fucked up on Zima. Yeah. <clears throat> How many Zimas would you need to black out? We're, oh, we got a. Oh, we got a. Guys, Star you came in the right Trek questions. Hey, we, hey, a quick shout out to the Star Trek Tours. Whoa. Sunset Boulevard. 
Thanks yes. for stopping by, Adam Ray, John Kite. The yep. way and they, that made them drive faster. Okay. The way Gene <laughs> Roddenberry man. wanted it to take his beloved series <laughs> so, into hey, crappy Kate, Hollywood what's up, tours. Guys? Oh man, um, boy, never thought I'd <laughs> I'd scream at Star Trek trying to get some love. But those were, guys could not have put the pedal to the metal. Do you know any what they faster. were looking for? They asked Comedy Store, "Where can we find a comedy show?" And then they kept driving. <laughs> what an insult! I did. Do you remember the first time you saw one of those TMZ vans, though? And did you do try to do a bit with it? Like when I was working at Universal Studios doing the tram ride, Jim Carrey famously came up uh, to a, a couple of people's trams the day I was working, and I was so bummed. And he was shooting, I think, Man on the Moon, and he came up in full Andy Kaufman and fucked uh, with a couple of the trams. And uh, just hearing that, and it was like, you know, from people that, guys, great to see you. you guys don't wear his mask so. properly. <laughs> what is that, a feedback, like a horse? <laughs> anyway, we're back. Do you get upset? Do you chastise people or call them out if you see them at a Walgreens or somewhere with the mask not covering well, any part of their body? I was in line for a restaurant, a socially distant restaurant, and this woman was filming us, and she was like. You got to say that now, don't you? It's almost like saying, like, going out of your way. To, to be like, I was at this party. I voted and I for Obama, got, yeah. so here's the thing. <laughs> oh, was that not asked? My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, uh, so um, socially I'm for the Green New Deal. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> the um, so we're socially distanced in line, um, and I was donating to charity at the at the time. Um, and, at the time, and You've I since stopped. No, no. I well, I gave everything. <laughs> They call me the giving tree at those charities because there's nothing left but old stump kite. Um, so God, I definitely thought you were going to say a different word. My only fans, <laughs> old stump kite. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I love it. Village people. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Woo. That one guy. The rest of them were like, we're not in it. Um, <laughs> so a, this is a coincidence. This. Yeah. We we didn't realize we we were all going to the village people callback. Oh, we got to paint the this <laughs> late at night. We got to paint the um, picture. It was four guys in construction outfits. No, no. I just wanted people to do it. Themselves. I almost said costumes. <laughs> Cool costumes, guys. Those like, firefighters are really fake putting out that fire. Yeah, yeah. They just come up with a hose. There's nothing in it. So you're donating so, to charity. So I'm donating to charity. And uh, at the time, I was uh, donating plasma. And um, this For woman real? came up. No. And this, we're outside. And, and uh, we're, we're in line six feet apart. And I'm with a couple of friends. And this woman is dragging a suitcase like she's going to the airport. She's not. And she's filming us going, look at how unsafe all of you are. Like screaming in our faces. Hold on, hold on, guys. Let me finish. She's not wearing a mask. Oh God! And she's going, "Look at you!" And and then this woman ahead of us in line goes, "Where's your mask?" And she goes, "No, no, 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 no! You don't get to." And she's filming, and they're like, "Look at you! Everyone is wearing a mask." I mean, this woman obviously, yeah, high on meth. And um, uh, Jesus, I love when that that that's because you know I. Uh, I just don't understand like some of these videos I've seen of people that just get so fired up. It's like, man, it ain't. It, oh, Alex Jones. Yeah, but even just like the guy. I, I will. Uh, I will the, eat my neighbor. There was the guy. I will eat my neighbor. Well, yeah, that was crazy. There was a guy. I, think, I think it was at a Home Depot that he. I posted it. it was oh, it's in was Florida. Flexing. It was in Florida. The guy that was flexing. What did he say? He pointed his finger in the guy's face and yep. said, um, "There was a quote from it that was really inspirational." It, uh, um, something about something like about eating your daily bread. I think it was from the Bible. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But with oh, he said where a kid can be a kid. Hilarious. God, we're just quoting back Chuck shit. E. Cheese. Yeah, it, that's who it was. was Chuck E. Oh, Cheese. <laughs> it was the Is guy. Work? It was a giant mouse. <laughs> so people weren't as offended. <laughs> yeah, you know who was really offended? Chippy's Pizza Safari. What is that? In the Midwest, to compete with Chuck E. Cheese, there was <laughs> Chimpy's Pizza Safari. What about fuck you? What about what Showbiz Pizza? Well, that I remember. Come on, the original Chippy's Chimpy's Chimp yeah. Chimpy's. Sh- what is it? You know what kind of animal Chimpy Chif- was? What a, a squirrel? Chimpanzee. Okay, <laughs> Chimp is a doctor. Chimp uh, Galvikovitz. Yeah. So what is it? Galliwackets. So so Ch- Chimp- Chippy's Safari Chimp- Pizza. Chimpies. Chimpies, Safari Pizza World. Chimpies Pizza Safari. Oh, God. I mean. Listen, this first interview is not going well. <laughs> We're not getting this away. So I'm the guy trying to get a job there. and he's Just like, tell us where you want to work. <laughs> There's, Chimpies Safari we've Pizza. We've got three Adam pizza buddy. franchises I am trying. in Milwaukee. Showbiz, tr- Chucky. You wanted to franchise one of these. You don't even know the name. How many do you think there were? At least two. Now, what was the uh, decor like? Because I know Chuck E. Cheese. It was purple. It was a very similar. Was it Safari esque? Yes, it was. It was a it was a jungle theme. Gotcha. I mean, they were they were in direct competition. Fuck. 
Were they good? Uh, it was the same. You know what I mean? It was like it. None listen, of the pizza was great, but if you're no, Chuck E. Cheese had come the, on, it was before Dave and Buster's. You're right. I mean, there was, but like when we were kids, there was Showbiz Pizza, Chuck E. Cheese. Um, what was the E? What did the E stand for? I don't know. Chuck. I don't know. Edgar. Edgar, <laughs> right? Chuck Edgar Cheese. Chuck Charles. Yeah. Charles Edgar <laughs> Cheesington. They changed it at Ellis Island. <laughs> Ooh, really have a, there, I a think cheddar I, chip on his shoulder. The better entertainment there was, <laughs> the worse the pizza was. You know what I'm saying? Well, that showbiz pizza, the entertainment, that that gorilla who didn't play the drums, who yeah. played the drums, yeah. the greatest thing in my in my life. I by haven't the way, seen the, the Rolling Stones, thing, but I've seen the showbiz pizza band 16 times, bro. It, they're Cover my the fish. Rolling Stones. <laughs> they're my fish. You know what? When You've they traveled. cover Chippy's Pizza Safari, it's like woo. I still feel like you're saying Chippies. Yeah, I got a Chimpies. Yeah, Chimpies. <sighs> I gotta look this up. Is there a doc? Chuck well, Entertainment that's Cheese. Convenient. Yeah. yeah. Charles Entertainment Cheese. Charles Entertainment Cheese. Now is it based on an actual guy named Charles? You know what that sounds like? Donald Trump as a mouse. Hey, what? This is Charles Entertainment, Entertainment Cheese. Yeah, yeah. I make look, all the cheddar. We're buying all our ventilators from from the show. All pizza the ventilators. Band. They're so good. If He's you want a ventilator. Wait, the showbiz pizza band plays uh, his inauguration. He's like, Gorilla, play me out. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the songs he picks for these rallies. I'm like, there's no way he got the rights. What was it? The last Where one a I kid saw? can be the kid. Yeah, it's just it's just toys. KB Toys. Remember that? Who gave you that cape? Li- that, that, that playlist? <laughs> Kevin Spacey. <laughs> We've got the soundtrack from Night Lives. We've got the soundtrack. It's so good. So good. Uh, would you, uh, do you have, do you ever think about the song? Do you go out of your way to actually pick the song that you walk on the stage with? Every time. Headlining? What song is that? I used to do Bad Companies Feel Like Making Love. That's good. And then I would strip in the front row to the guy in the front row. Whoa. For real. To the whole song? Feel I'm making. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Now, what if he's real homophobic? Because I was with Bobby Lee in Washington. Oh, you mean America? Yeah, I was with Bobby Lee in Washington D.C. about two thousand at the Improv ten at the Improv in D.C. Yep, and he's doing his uh, striptease dance, closing out the show. Which, by the way, he did it two months later. I think this is when Bobby turned forty, and he goes, he walked in the green room. It crushes all the time. Oh, all the time. He goes in the green room and goes, "I gotta stop." He with his hands in his face, he goes, "I gotta stop." He goes, "Why am I doing this?" He goes, "This is so sad." I go, "It crushed." He goes, "I gotta stop." He's like, "No more." He's like, "That was the last time." That's how funny Bobby Lee is. That he crushes and he goes, "I gotta figure out a different ending." Yeah, but but he was. Like I can't do it. He's like, what am I doing? Because he's sitting there in his underwear, uh, which I, even the underwear he bought for the striptease, it didn't even look like underwear. It looked it like a little diaper, stitched together diaper. It yeah, like, it looks a little diaper. It looked like bags from Ralph's that they had somehow uh, maneuvered into a. This is not a having anything to do with his ethnicity. It looked like a sumo. It did. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. probably comfortable. So he's sitting in that, questioning his existence. And this is the early show, and it crushes. He's like, I'm done. That was the last time I was doing it. Yeah. Cut to an hour and a half later. Just going to town, but but in D.C., you know, he would always bring somebody up, a dude, because that was the one thing that was uh, really funny is he would do it on a dude, and yeah. so there's always that give and take of the guy being put on the spot, maybe a little uncomfortable, uh, but would 98% of the time play along, and he brings up a big dude, and this Trump. guy's up there. Was that Trump? And <laughs> I, what's happening? I wish it was. This guy did not know what he was in for. What is going on here? And Bobby would start... <laughs> Bobby would start, uh, like, kind of massaging the guy in his chest, right? So he's massaging Trump's chest. Ooh. <laughs> right there. Then he gets right down. Uh, then he started to go in between his thighs. Oh, my God. And then, so good. And then he would do the other thigh. Ooh, that's a great one. Are you going to pee on it? And so then he would. Let me have it. And then he would touch the inside of the thighs. What that do? And after those thighs get rubbed. That's when he would uh, get hit the music and start doing the dance. But he rubs one thigh and he moves his hand over to grab the other one. And this dude just grabs Bobby's hand and lifts it up slowly and just goes, you better watch yourself. And then Bobby just turns out to the crowd and everyone starts laughing because it's yeah, still funny. Of course. And Bobby just turns to the crowd and goes, I think we should bring somebody else up on stage. And that gets a big laugh. And then he goes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Guys, give him a round of applause. Thanks so much. And then went off to explain how much worse it was going to get. And the guy sat back down. But like, dude. It was a, a real fascinating, like, social experiment to see someone's just in, uh, entire, uh, you know, attitude. Yes. He got up there being like, all right, I'm already up here against uh, my better uh, judgment. You could tell he was not comfortable. 
and uh, to see him slowly get taken out of his zone. Can I tell you this, though? The first time, and uh, shout out, I never got to thank him. I, I opened for Tim Meadows like years and years and years ago, 2019. And um, no, no, no. When I first started doing stand-up, and Tim Meadows would go on stage and he would do the ladies' man bit, you know. By the way. Open or close? Oh, but just a bunch probably just calling it back to it. Well, he closed the show with it. Yeah. Do you know Tim? No. Um, but I, he's, he, he's a he he to me I put him in the top twenty of all time SNL. Let me tell you when I went, when when we were in high school he came back and did a Second City. I'm from Chicago. Oh yeah, and he came back to do the improv. They're like, oh, and by the way, this was before the internet, before clocks, and um, they were <laughs> like, hey, they were like, by the way, you guys we're gonna do the improv after the show. We were all in high school. We were so young, like 16 years old, and they go, oh, uh, do you guys mind if we bring on a special guest? And we were like. You know, oh, yeah, who is it? Like Barry Barrington? And they're like, you guys might have seen him on SNL, Tim Meadows. And we were all like, oh! We just started like ripping the chairs apart. We're just Holy like, we're just like shit. choking each other out. We're <laughs> like, this is incredible. <laughs> and um, so it was like really fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just because like, yeah. we couldn't believe it. And um, so I got an incredible opportunity where, when I just started doing stand up again years ago. And, and uh, this guy's like, well, you could do this night headlining, but can you open for Tim? Whoa! The first thing, and I was like, "Absolutely, yep. you know." So I go there and I watch him, and um, I'm just a fan. We never, when we get to like, I say hi. He's in his zone. He's starting stand up, yes. you know. And um, the first time, the ladies bit, he, the ladies man bit, he has to bring someone up on stage. And I learned this at a very early time in my thing because he did two shows that night, and one of them. The ladies' man bit fucking murdered. He could have retired that night. Yep. And the other night, it was as if he was like, guys, I don't think 9-11 happened. And it was like, what? <laughs> and people were just like, Tim no. Taylor, Tim Taylor flies in, or oh, Tim Allen flies yeah. in for that. Ah, 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 just to go, ah, 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 and then walks out. Then it, yeah. Al Borland. <laughs> no. T- uh, what's his name? Wilson. And I'm like, when there is, why is there a fence in here? Fuck, He's like, that guy's so bummed. No one's ever going to know his real name. What is it? Richard Kind. Or oh. Richard um, Karn. No, the, the Wilson. Oh, Wilson? I don't fucking. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. He gets no, no respect. <laughs> um, uh, but it's, That's it's crazy. crazy. So because like, and he relied on the on the audience participation on a bit, by the way, that everyone's heard of. It had a movie for God's sake. Oh yeah, and fucking destroyed. Destroyed. Uh, and when it was when it was on, it was on, bro. It was so funny, and he was doing like the voice, and it was like a it was like a personalized version for a woman in front of everybody of the sketch happening on stage. It was so entertaining. That's amazing. And then one, and then the the other talk time to you guys after it was just like. Oh, just a no. complete flip flop of it was yeah it was as if someone was like we're we're here to bury someone to it was like people showed up for the funeral yeah. of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. and yet this guy was going to come and do jokes about it like people were expecting something else or whatever it was because wow. you know I he's never done it publicly like. I've never seen him do stand up on the Tonight Show or like Jimmy Kimmel or mm-hmm. Conan or whatever. So I think people didn't know what he, his stand up was going to be. Yeah. Probably going to tell some old stories, which I always love. And yep. when I go to see yep. people like that, I'm like, please tell us a story we've never heard before. Yep. I love when Spade does it. Yeah, you know. And um, and then it's like he did it, and he was telling some great stuff. And then he goes, "I'm going to end on this thing," and people are like, "Yeah." And then for whatever reason, like the just the, the it was off for whatever reason. That's so. Uh, you know, maybe he just wasn't doing it a lot and just felt or felt so at home with uh you know from being from there and and like he could just you know sometimes when the audience is so generous and on your side maybe you just feel like you can truly say anything but i mean how much do you i know that i do this how much do you go off script when the audience is just into it oh so much dude when you know they're feeling it you're like you know but i, I what do you do, guys want to talk about and just go off i often do wonder if i locked up the phones like Chappelle does what i would really talk about but oh, I got a whole other file on my computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of stuff that I can't talk about unless it's the end of the world. But uh, before we wrap this up, yeah, you can talk about your show that you're filming right now. Yes, right. Yes, comes out when we uh, probably spring of next year. Great, it's amazing. It's called Stop Embarrassing Me, Dad. Stop embarrassing me with Jamie Fox and David Allen Greer and David Allen Greer, which is I don't know how much in living color. Uh, rehashing there is going on there, or is it just, or, or do you watch them interact and just get taken back to that? We time? are well, so it's incredible. Like number one, by the way, uh, Bentley. I don't know if you know uh, uh, Bentley, who was the uh, showrunner, co-creator of Martin. 
Oh my! And God. the Jamie Foxx show. Bentley. Emmons wow. Is our showrunner. That's amazing. Co-executive producer with Jamie and That's his a good daughter. Sign. Those are two Bro, very successful shows. It is shows. so fun. Yeah. Are you the only white guy? Yeah. That's it's fucking... about time. <laughs> I know. Um, it is so fun. Everybody who's on set is so talented. I mean, listen, we've all been a part of. You know what? It is one of the most fun experiences I've ever had in my life because all the fun that you think people are having, we're that we really are having that fun. Yeah, we are trying to make each other laugh nonstop. on set, nonstop, in the middle of takes. I will come in. I came in with a Danny Glover reference. I don't even know if I'll make the cut. Just trying to make Jamie laugh because he had a Danny Glover joke. And then I came in as if I had just seen Danny Glover doing wind sprints. <laughs> and, and you know, they want... They want you to do your thing and they want everyone well, to be set up to win. They're just... They're so... They're, everybody is so talented and so independently funny and giving. And everybody knows, like, the respect that I have for the people... Uh, you know, whether it's the writers, the producers, you know, uh, Jamie, they, everybody just is working together. Yeah. And their, their love, I feel like we're just loving being around each other. That's and awesome. we, it really feels like a family. Jamie is EP, uh, not directing or anything, but he's, you can tell it's his, he's, pro, a he's at the helm. The best. I mean, when you see some of the stuff that he's doing, that like it's written one way and he goes, we'll do it, but he goes, let me just do this other thing. He plays this preacher. But he plays himself. I mean, he plays this guy, yes. you know, the lead of the show. And we're playing other characters, too. I played another preacher named, this is real, Chucky e. Change, <laughs> who was trying to get money. That's and he amazing. played a preacher. And we would do it as written. And then he just went off script for 10 minutes. And it's just all like, brilliant. let's just put, all, let's just yeah. have that be the, like, we, the cameras weren't on us. We were laughing the entire time. That's amazing. We were in the pews. And how much of the crew, since it's COVID times, like, is there, there's less people yeah. on set, right? But the crew is amazing. Yeah. A woman, actually, Debbie, shout out to Debbie, who was a camera woman on uh, Two Broke Girls for many seasons, oh, is one of the camera so cool. operators. It was so you good to see her. I mean, you're comfy in your uh, element anyway, but does stuff like that make you even more I no. just, you know, it feels nice to have been friends and to be friends with someone like you, where we met when we were both at uh, Osbrink, yeah. a voiceover. Um, yeah. I, I almost couldn't come up with it. Yeah. And, um, and the fact that we are living our dream, still enjoying each other's friends, yeah. uh, each other, like our company, and our comedy. And have seen each other grind yes. 10 plus years and knowing that the that we've each had our... You know, you, your your cool times, your floating times, your times when you're like, yeah. man, I need to fucking buckle down. Yeah. And, I mean, so it's, there's something wonderfully satisfying of people, of, of running into people and be and being run into on their journey. Yeah. To being on a journey and walking side by side with someone like you and then walking, you know, Deep, like going off on my own path for a second and then bumping into someone on their journey yeah. and being like because you know we don't see these people I, I may, I'm I, I, I'm doing a bit right now that I'm writing about how we're all living a Saudi Arabian soap opera because you can only <laughs> see everybody's eyes right yeah, yeah. and so I go the craziest thing I didn't know it was her I go her eyes look very familiar and then because we had hung out for yeah. six years yeah. you know and then I saw her having lunch and she's like, hey, it's, and I go, I know who you are. Like, I know it's you. Wow. Because she did say hi. I go, immediately I was like, hello, Debbie. Nice to see you. And so it was very cool to see people working. Like, and the crew, because they don't come in until the last second. Yeah. And Netflix has been ridiculously safe. You get tested um, every day. Safe, yeah. Incredibly. They are, whatever that we need or whatever it's there to make us comfortable yeah. and everybody comfortable, done. You would assume that they would be that on top of it being the big streaming service that they are but yeah you know, but knows? you don't know listen you is obviously it's new for everybody it's, so. and it's great to have walked into that environment and we feel i mean i don't you know i think i speak for everybody we feel so safe yeah. so cared for and it's just awesome like you're obviously going to australia yeah like it's it's just fun to be not listen everybody's going through their own thing yeah but to being a part of something that i think and i know the thing that you're a part of people are really going to love and yeah. enjoy and entertain people that's so cool man and so, yeah seeing some of the videos you posted of you and jamie fox on set making each other laugh or oh doing that's all we're trying that. to do <clears throat> that's awesome we did by the way we had a dave and busters this set 
it's in the, in the Created? Of episode, dude. The the crew is there is, a Papa shot. There we played Papa shot all day. Of course you did. It was it was set up since day like it was the first episode we did when we came back because we shot one right before the lockdown, and of course everyone on set is trying to break the record because it's a real Papa yeah. shot machine, so it has a real record That's built amazing. into it. That's fucking amazing. So we're having an amazing time. But this woman, uh, this Portia Coleman, is amazing. Plays Jamie's sister. Um, uh, 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 Kyla Drew plays his daughter, and you play. I play his best friend. Amazing! It's so great. Uh, I'm so happy for you. Thanks, it's man. such a fucking cool part and cool show, it's the best. and it's like on a great uh, platform I love to be Netflix. seen. Yeah. Um. All right. So stay tuned for that. I guess 2021. Yeah, I think so. Um. I love you. Thanks, Thanks for, for doing do- this, you know, dude. I I'll always cool to be that. in a space where it feels familiar and around uh just familiar faces and uh. Because that's uh, you what and I just wants. did an hour at the comedy store. Yeah, not many people can say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, J B Kite on Twitter. Uh, no, Jonathan Kite at everything. Jonathan Kite on that's Instagram. Right. Jonathan Kite on Twitter. Jonathan Kite at LinkedIn. Uh, you're still on LinkedIn? No, never, never. What if joined. you were only sending uh, guys? I'm only on LinkedIn. <laughs> like you, you're still that guy. that's like LinkedIn's the original OnlyFans. You're like, okay, yeah. dude. Okay, dude. There's no pictures. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's it's nuggets. <laughs> is that your my LinkedIn is at nuggets? <laughs> There was a story I just recently saw. I don't know if, if I have Google alerts for this, but another guy, of course, in Florida, getting busted for trying to smuggle McNuggets in his asshole. Google it. Good night, everybody. <laughs>